Let's talk about modal windows. A modal window is a pop-up window that forces the user to interact with it before returning to the website. Websites often use modal windows as call-to-action tools and for pointing out important information. For example, the call-to-action in a modal window might ask the visitor to subscribe to the site's newsletter. Modal windows are useful for warnings, informational boxes, and more. You can create modal window boxes using jQuery. Let's go ahead and build a modal window. Here's the page that we'll be building out. The content on the page is very simple. We're just going to focus on the interactivity in regards to making the modal window functional. When I click check it out, you can see that the page somewhat dims out and a new pop-up window appears. You can include any information you want within the pop-up window. And when the user is done, they need to have a way to close the window. Usually that is done by clicking on a button or clicking a close icon or in order to make the functionality work, the user should be able to click anywhere away from the window and close the window. And that's what we're going to build out here. Let me show you what I have in regards to the starting HTML. Here's my starting HTML page. I'm already pointing out to a CSS reset and a style.css file, which I'll share with you in just a moment. In addition, I have a link to the jQuery library and I have an embedded script tag that already has the document ready function. As for my HTML, I have a div with a class of pop-up overlay. Inside that div, I have a div with a class of pop-up content. Inside pop-up content, I can place any information I want, text, images, buttons, whatever. I also have a link with a class of button and a class of close. After this pop-up overlay div, I have the regular page content. So in this case, I have a main element with an H1 and a paragraph, and I have a link with a class of button and open, and this allows the modal window to be initiated. As for my starting CSS, I have some basic CSS on the various elements. As you can see, I've styled my button links so that they look more like buttons. I've removed the underline, given them rounded corners, I'm having them display as inline block, and I've given them padding, font size, and border and background colors. I also have a rule for hover so that when you hover over my buttons, they inverse out and the background changes to a gray and the text changes to white. We'll be needing to add some more CSS so that we can style our modal window. What I like to do is I like to create this while I look at the page so that I can be sure that whatever rules I'm making will be to my liking. We'll start off by making some rules for our modal window. I'll begin by targeting my pop-up overlay element. The pop-up overlay will be the overlay that sits on top of the entire page. Generally, this has some sort of alpha so that it brings the focus to the pop-up content and kind of washes out the rest of the content that's on the page. I'm going to achieve this by using a background color and I'm just going to set my background color to black and give it a little bit of opacity. Next, I'm going to give this a border and I'll assign some padding. If we save and we refresh, you're going to see that this dark gray color is going to show up at the top portion of my page. Now really, when the overlay is displaying, I want it to sit entirely over all of the content on the page. In order to do this, I'm going to need to use my position of absolute. I'll go ahead and set top to zero and I'm going to specify that I want both the width and the height to be 100%. Now if I save and refresh, you can see that this gray background kind of covers up all of the content on the page. Now let's go ahead and address the pop-up content. For this, I'm going to set the background color to white. We'll put a border on this as well. I'm going to add a border radius to slightly round the corners and I'm going to add a box shadow to give this a little bit of depth. Finally, I'm going to add some padding and I'm going to specify that I want the width to be 50%. Since I want this to sit in the middle of the page, I'm going to go ahead and use my position of absolute 
and then I can set the left value to 25%, which should center this element on the page, and it does. Now that I have this dialed in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the visibility to be hidden on both of these elements. The visibility property specifies whether or not an element is visible. It's a lot like display none. The main difference is that the visibility property will hide an element without changing the layout of the document. Now because we are using position absolute on both of the elements, it won't change the layout anyways since the position of those elements is being altered by the position property. It is worth mentioning that this example would work with a display of none as well as visibility of hidden. Now since we don't want the pop-up to be hidden forever, we need to make a special use case in the CSS for when the pop-up should be shown. We're going to go ahead and use jQuery to help determine when the pop-up should be visible. jQuery has the ability to add and remove classes based on actions like clicking. We're going to go ahead and we're going to program jQuery to add a class when the open button is clicked. And then we'll go ahead and we'll remove the class when the close button has been clicked. We can append the class to the HTML and create new styling for when the pop-up is visible. These are the rules for how we want the pop-up to look when the pop-up is visible. But currently, by default, we don't want the pop-up to be showing. So we've changed the visibility on both of these elements to hidden. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new rule for popup overlay dot active. Notice there's no space here. When there's no space, it means that both of these classes must be present in order for this rule to be valid. We're going to go ahead and we're going to change our visibility to visible. We'll do the exact same thing for the popup content. So I'm just going to use a group selector here and we'll write a very similar selector, popupcontent.active. Now, these two rules, of course, are not going to do anything on the page because there is no active class currently present. We're going to go ahead and we're going to have jQuery add the class when the checkout button or when our open button has been clicked. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to be adding this script as an embedded script so we can just focus on the content that is on this page. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select the button that we want to be the trigger for this behavior. So this link has a class of open. That's going to be my selector. Then I'll go ahead and add a click event. And when the click event happens, we'll run a function. Now when this open button has been clicked, what we want to do is we want to add the active class to both the pop-up overlay and the pop-up content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of those elements. We do this by using the group selector so we can separate the elements with a comma, just like we do with CSS. Then we're going to use our add class method and then all I have to do is specify the class that I want to add. And in this case, we're going to add the class of active. As I mentioned before, it doesn't matter if you use single or double quotes. I generally use single quotes. So for the sake of consistency, I'm going to change this to single quotes. Let's go ahead and save our page and test this and see if it works. If we refresh the page, when we click our open button, you can see that it does indeed open both the overlay and the content. So this is exactly how we want this behavior to work. Now all we have to do is we have to create the code so that when we click this link, the close button, it goes ahead and it removes the active class. In order to do this, I'm going to select my close button. And in addition to selecting the close button, I'm also going to select the pop-up overlay. This will ensure that the user is able to click in the darkened part of the page. They're not restricted to only clicking on the button, but they could also click out here. 
Once again, I'm using a group selector to select both of these elements. We'll go ahead and we'll use our click event. We'll create our function. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select both the pop-up overlay and the pop-up content, just like we did before. This time we'll use the remove class method. And we're simply going to remove the active class. I'll add a semicolon to the end of this statement. And now I'm ready to test this out. If I refresh my page, when I click the check it out button, the modal window opens. When I click my close button, it closes. And in addition, I'm able to click in the pop-up overlay area and that too will close the modal window. As you can see, Using jQuery allows us to add and remove classes when a specific event happens. In this case, we're using the click event to find out when the user interacts with these buttons. And when they do, we're going to change the page in some meaningful way.